Hey, this is Stand in the Gap today. I'm Sam Rohr, accompanied today in the co-host chair by evangelist Dave Kissler. And our special guest is Dr. Bill Solis, who is with us once a month. He is the founder of Prophecy Depot Ministries, which you can find at their website of prophecydepot.com. And this is our bi-monthly Israel and Prophecy update program. Our theme today is coming off of the pages of the headline news, Russia versus Ukraine, and we're linking to that, looking at the potential or the comparable aspect of Russia versus Israel, which we find in Scripture in Ezekiel 38. We're going to move in that direction here now as we go into the program. But on our front pages of news today, we know, we see, we can't get away from it, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia is still being discussed in terms of motivation by Putin. What's he really up to and all that? The goals of Russia, what are they? We heard yesterday on this program from a pastor from Ukraine as an example who said actually that the church in Russia believes this engagement by Russia against Ukraine is a holy war. The church in Russia. So, I mean, there's a lot of strange things happening. So that's being discussed. And at the same time, there's a broader underlying globalist goal that weaves through this entire thing as put forth by, for instance, the World Economic Forum, where their ambitions are truly evil. They're making that very clear, and I refer to them as the Antichrist Advance Team. So you've got a lot of elements moving here. As each day goes by, though, the further consolidation and the highlighting of biblically prophesied nations by name, in many cases, highlighted specifically in Ezekiel 38 and 39, raises the natural question of timing of this war against Israel, talked about there, led by Russia and her allies, and then other involved nations that come along as well. Now, it raises also the natural parallel application to the current invasion of Ukraine by Russia and a consideration of the current Russia versus Ukraine war in light of this biblically prophesied war of Russia versus Israel. So, Bill, this is quite a topic. You've been doing some teaching on this, and so I thought it would be really great to go into this a little bit here today. But no student of biblical prophecy can deny certain similarities, at least between Russia invading Ukraine and the biblically prophesied intended invasion of Israel by Russia. So, while the motivations may be different now to later, there maybe are some similarities that you could draw out. Would you identify and kind of compare contrast these two events? Absolutely, Sam. You know, and, and a lot of us who are interested in Bible prophecy are watching this invasion very closely because of those similarities. We see that this Ezekiel 38 Bible prophecy is drawing very near. The stage is set. Uh, the national relationships are being formed by some of these leaders uh, with Russia, Turkey, and Iran like never before. So we're watching these events very closely, and there are some parallels. You know, 2,600 years ago, the prophet Ezekiel said that in the latter days, in Ezekiel 38, verse 10, it'll come to pass that thoughts will rise in your, and he's speaking about a Russian president, a Russian ruler, evil thoughts will, thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. And the plan is you will come up against, this is in Ezekiel 38, 16, it's spelled out, you will come up against my people, Israel. Now, this is not the Ukraine, but this is Israel, this, this segment in the future. Come upon them like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days. I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I'm hallowed in you, O Gog. That's the titled name of this Russian president before their eyes. So we're watching this, this latter days Russian ruler. We believe we're in the latter days. I presume hopefully most of your listeners understand those signs are quite clear at this point. We're living in the latter days. Thoughts have arisen in a Russian ruler's mind, and an evil plan has been de devised to come up against the land of, in an unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. Now, some of the other similarities... You, mean, you it, mean Israel? Well, the unprovoked attack of Ukraine presently, Okay. but there'll be an unprovoked attack in the future that I was just alluding to in Ezekiel 38, so sorry if I was oh. unclear on that. Okay. But the parallels also, that invasion with Russia with its, its hordes, it's going to come to gather plunder, booty, acquired livestock and goods. They're coming for Israel's prosperity, and that that's their motive in Ezekiel 38 and 39. But there's some similarities here that are not often talked about with Ukraine also. Ukraine is sort of the breadbasket of Europe. 
it supposedly has the second largest in gas reserves in that whole European area there, but of course it's a lot of it's untapped. But Ukraine is the fifth largest producer of corn, and Russia combined with Ukraine is the fourth the world produces about a fourth of the world's wheat. So, you know, there's some similarities we're watching here very closely with this invasion, end times, evil thoughts, unprovoked invasion for, for pro prosperity and gain. So very much similar scenarios. Bill, let me ask you this. A couple of weeks ago, probably a week and a half, two weeks ago, we had a military strategist and biblical student, J.R. McGee, on the program. He's been a regular on the program. Our listeners will know who he is well. And at the end of the program, Sam asking a very intriguing question. And the question was this, how do we pray for this current situation in Ukraine? And J.R. said this, he said, pray for mud. And when he said that, I thought that's an odd prayer request. But he went on to explain, he said, whenever the ground begins to thaw there in Ukraine and the moisture that's frozen in the ground when all that begins to thaw, that's going to be advantageous to the Ukrainian people, to the Ukrainian troops, because the Russian tanks and the Russian trucks will get bogged down in the mud and they can't move through the mud. Well, within a matter of days of JR mentioning that on this program, and I believe many of our listeners on the 450 stations around the country that listen to this program begin to pray, that's precisely what happened. We watched as that entire 40 mile long caravan came almost to a dead standstill. And we saw images, video pictures, of these tanks being bogged down in the mud. Now, the media has not acknowledged anything with respect to God's intervention in behalf of the Ukrainian people, much like, as you're drawing parallels here now, the Ezekiel 38 war, God directly intervenes. And he deals with Russia and all those hordes that come down against Israel. I'm just curious as to how you may look ahead and project how the media, who will not acknowledge God's involvement in this current situation, how they're going to try to justify, not give God credit for what happens in the Ezekiel 38 war. You know, that is really an interesting phenomenon, a supernatural phenomenon, an answer to prayer in my estimation about the, the frame for mud. You know, when God intervenes on behalf of a nation, his methods of warfare are unconventional. They're supernatural. So we looked at the Egypt example, you know, and we're told in Exodus 14, verses 19 through 20, that he, the Lord created a pillar of cloud that had separated the Jewish exiles from the Egyptian army. And this cloud created darkness in the Egyptian camp. And then interestingly, the, this canopy of darkness enabled God to enter into the camp of the Egyptians' army by stealth. We find out that once he was inside the camp, God somehow supernaturally removed the lug nuts off the chariot wheels of his chariots, and they started to fall off, making it difficult for them to be driven. And this created panic amidst the soldiers, the Egyptians at that time. They said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against these Egyptians. So, you know, it's, that's one example I think is very relevant, because we're going to see in Ezekiel 38 and 39, the Lord supernaturally intervenes, not the American troops or the Israeli defense forces. It's too formidable of an offensive coming against Israel with Russia and its hordes. That are going to come down from the uttermost parts of the north. So God will intervene. And I've been thinking about this. Uh, what's going to happen? I'll, I'll lay out the, some of the details of how God will intervene and defeat this, this, win this battle for Israel. But I started thinking, what if we saw some of this happen like right now? Well, we saw an example with the mud, like you're talking about. Of course, what I'm about to tell you now is much more deeper and broader and clearly uh, is going to demonstrate that God did it. The God of the Jews prevented this invasion from being successful. And what, what's going to happen is there's going to be this great earthquake. Now imagine there's reporters on the ground from Fox and CNN and that sort of thing. And they see this great earthquake come all of a sudden that shakes the, the whole part of the upper part of the nation of Israel. And every man's sword, then there's panic caused, and every man's sword comes against its brother, it says. And then there's pestilence and bloodshed, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. In other words, this, this is how the Lord is going to win that war. If all of a sudden we saw that going on in Ukraine right now, everybody would take a pause and step back and go, oh my goodness, this is clearly a God intervention, much more than making the soil mud. And there's going to be an, People are going to be watching this happen when Russia's coming down. There'll be correspondents in Jerusalem. They're going to be going, you know, oh, what's Russia coming down here for? They're coming for plunder and booty. Poor Israel. How's Israel going to defend against Russia, Turkey, Iran, North African countries like Libya, and uh, maybe Morocco and Tunisia and Sudan? Uh, maybe some of the stands, the Kazakh stands and that sort of thing, those former Soviet republics, and little tiny Israel. But it says at that time Israel is going to be a different place. It's going to be greater, safer. It'll be dwelling without walls, bars, or gates. 
and they're going to be in receipt of great plunder and booty because that's what Russia is coming after. But the reporters are going to see this coming, and they're going to be shocked. They're going to go, wow, <laughs> the God of Israel just, just defeated this Russian advance against Israel, when Israel had really little, no chance to win that war. And the reason it's done, and it's a marquee event of the end times, God says in Ezekiel 39.7, after he does those supernatural feats, I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and they shall not profane that my name anymore, and the nation shall know I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. This is an event that's coming, and I think what we're seeing right now in Ukraine is a stage setting, a precursor to this momentous, miraculous, supernatural defeat by, by God of Russia's troops when they come to invade Israel. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, even as we started with Purim, the ability of God to intervene is clear. He has in the past, and he will again. And when he intervenes, it's going to be very, very clear that it's God and God alone. God does not share his glory with any other, and it will be manifested. And we're looking at what's actually ramping up to it, we really believe, even right now. Stay with us. We'll be back as we continue Russia versus Ukraine, a precursor event. Bill, before we get into your comment on Israel's attitude toward a nuclear-equipped Iran, which, again, we've been talking about, you've been talking about, it's many would say they're right there on that cusp of it right now, if, if they're not already having it. There's a lot of speculation about the potential use of nuclear weapons by Russia in Ukraine. Your thoughts on that consideration? Yeah, that's a, a great concern. You know, most of the nuclear-powered nations understand that you can't win a nuclear war if they're, I would say, mostly the, most of the sane nuclear-powered nations. The question is, you know, who's sane and who's not these days? And that's why Vladimir Putin's character is being looked at quite closely. You know, is he, he's turning out to be a madman. Is he in a position where he would actually do the unthinkable and launch a nuclear weapon? You know, there's enough nuclear weapons around the globe to destroy the whole planet. And that's why, basically, we had mutually assured destruction, MAD. Russia, for instance, has over 6,000 nuclear weapons. 1,400 plus are active, 3,000 are available, 1,700 are retired. United States, in, in comparison, that's quite a few. We've got about 5,500. China's got 350, and they're growing their arsenal. France has got 290. UK has 225. But then you also got the other actors out there, Pakistan with 165, India with 156, and then Israel, they say about 90, but some people think they could have 200. And remember, each one of those nuclear weapons can take out a whole city. And then North Korea, of great concern, they say it's approaching almost 50 nuclear weapons. So this is a great concern. Um, I do believe down the road, prophecy does speak about a nuclear war that hits the world and pursuit of a, and ultimately comes out of that would be a global order. But the question is, is is Putin stupid enough at this point and mad enough and insane enough to actually unleash, unleash his nuclear weapon in Ukraine and or elsewhere? And that, that and or elsewhere could be the United States. And could that be an EMP, an electronic pulse, uh, electromagnetic pulse weapon, you know, which is a nuclear weapon launched up at certain burst altitudes up way above the sky that fries all the technologies down below on the, on the, the ground underneath it. So these are great concerns. Uh, that we're watching very closely. Bill, courtesy of both uh, Barack Obama and Joe Biden, we now have a nuclear-equipped Iran. And uh, if a year ago Iran thought they were in potential trouble, obviously now they're in much more trouble. I'm curious uh, as to how you would say Israel uh, should be viewing what's going on currently, because um, again, if they were in trouble a year ago, they're in a lot of trouble right now. So how should they be viewing all of this, especially as we would view it in light of biblical prophecy? Right. And that's a big deal because, you know, these uh, they're trying to reinstate that JCPOA that uh, Donald Trump backed out of in 2018. They've had eight rounds of talks in Vienna and that have really been unfruitful. And, of course, dealing in those, we've got Russia and China involved as part of the P5 plus one along with the United States trying to negotiate with Iran, which is a stacked deck for Iran because Russia's got uh, relationships with Iran. They're building nuclear power plants there. They, they've got two more they're working on right now in the Bashar province. China's got a 400, uh, I think it's $450 billion contract extended over 25 years for with Iran to trading you know, their monies for the fuel and energy from China. 
and from Iran. I mean, it's ridiculous. But Israel's concern is they're watching Ukraine closely, but the, the, Ukraine's not an ex existential threat, whatever happens in Ukraine to Israel at this point. But what is an existential threat is what's going on in Iran right now. And Iran is already enriching uranium up to 60%. They're a stone's throw away from having a nuclear weapon, which when you get to 90%. And not only that, but Israel is concerned about the tentacles that Iran has spread out, spread out the Middle East. Because Israel knows if they go to war with Iran, which they will probably be doing, and I think that's even in a Bible prophecy in Jeremiah chapter 49, dealing with Elam, E-L-A-M, verses 34 through 39. And they've got to deal with Hezbollah to the north of them in Lebanon, Hamas positioned to the southwest of them. These are proxies of Iran. And the Gaza territory, even got the Palestinian Islamic Jihad is over there in Beirut and Damascus. The Houthis now are in Yemen with precision-guided missiles that can hit Tel Aviv. Uh, Shia militias in Iraq and Bahrain. In other words, they're surrounded by Iran's tentacles and, and their, their proxies and agents. And it's understood in Israel that in, in, in the event of a disastrous war with Iran, it will also be waged against these proxies who have Israel surrounded. And so Israel is looking at a position where there could be thousands of missiles on a daily basis launched into Israel in, in a war with Iran, from Iran itself. And they've got missiles, ballistic missiles, that can get to Israel in eight, eight minutes. These are devastating, and they can, can hit targets with pinpoint accuracy. Here's a couple headlines just so you know the, the dangers that Israel is looking at. Uh, the IDF official says Israel expects Hezbollah to fire 2,000 rockets a day in a wartime. That was on the Times of Israel of October last year. Uh, this is, goes back in 2019. Uh, Press TV. Gaza matches Hezbollah can fire a thousand missiles a day. The Hamas can fire a thousand missiles a day. Now we're not talking about primitive missiles at this point, especially with Hezbollah. These, some of these are precision guided and could take out the Demona nuclear reactor. They could take out Ben Gurion Airport. They could take out Tel Aviv, and then also you know, they have chemical weapons in Syria. Uh, Bashar Shah used over, his chemical weapons over 300 times in the Syrian revolution. So we're talking about a existential threat that's unprecedented in Israel's modern-day existence coming at them if Iran gets a nuclear weapon. And it shifts the whole balance of power in the Middle East as well. Well, it, it, it does indeed. Now, that's Israel, and you only have about a minute left, but I want to put it out here as well to you because – See, in the middle of this, you've got Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudis are, uh, again, Islamic, but they're also afraid of Iran. The Saudis have been begging the Biden administration for military help. Biden has not given them anything. And so just a week ago, when Joe Biden sanctioned Russian oil, he went to uh, the Saudis and say, would you please uh, up the export of oil to America, and they basically turned a blind eye to Joe Biden and said, no, we don't, we're not, we're not going to. Uh, wh what do the Saudis think about a, a nuclear-empowered uh, uh, Iran here? Well, that's, a, that's too big of a question for one minute, but it, it involves not only Saudi Arabia, but all those Gulf cooperative states over there on the Persian Gulf. They're all very concerned about Iran getting a nuclear weapon. Those are predominantly Sunni Islamic nations. Uh, whereas Iran is a Shiite Islamic nation, and they have schisms between those two factions and within Islam. And Saudi Arabia is very concerned that if Iran gets a nuclear weapon, they will continue to spread their hegemony throughout the Middle East. The Houthis already, uh, part of a, in Yemen, part of a proxy of Iran, are already invading and bombing and attacking Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia thought that the, uh, with the Trump administration that, that they would buddy up with Israel as like the UAE and Bahrain and them that they could, Israel might do some damage to Iran and help protect everybody's interests over there. But now that Joe Biden's president, uh, Saudi Arabia's actually had some meetings with Tehran to see if there's anything they could find common ground on. <laughs> so, all right, you know, all words. right. Well, Bill, we're out of time. But you did a great job. I knew I asked you an impossible question, but you boiled it down sufficiently just to let our listeners know that there are more concerns there in the Middle East than just Israel and Iran and the powers that be are putting all these pieces together as we speak. When we come back, we're going to complete with talking about Israel's main concern with Russia and Ukraine. Well, as we uh, swing into our final segment now and try to wrap up this program, a big, big emphasis. This is our Israel Prophecy Update Program special guest again. 
uh, is Dr. Bill Solis. He's been with us a number of times every month now, and uh, we're really looking forward uh, to it. And I know many of you have commented on this, but he's the founder of Prophecy Depot Ministries, has a website at prophecydepot.com. A lot of information there that is in this specific area of focus uh, that we're talking about today and on these programs. Now, we're also talking about, obviously, springing off of the, of the engagement there between Russia versus Ukraine. I want to take just one, just a couple minutes here and mention again, uh, we yesterday on this program, we spent the entire program talking about Ukraine. Uh, our international director, Dale Armstrong, was with me. We talked about what's actually happening on the ground there. And we uh, mentioned as well about our Ukraine initiative. Ukraineinitiative.com is the website. So, And our specific American Pastors Network involvement through what we're calling our 10 Men Initiative. 10 men, teams of 10 men going for 10 days most likely to Romania, uh, with $10,000 in their pocket, procuring supplies on that side, and then delivering them through, orchestrated through the churches in Ukraine, led by the pastors in Ukraine to help meet the needs of the fellow believers, almost three million there now displaced. Uh, I've been really thankful for the many who all across the country have been uh, contacting and donating. Mark, if you go to the website, uh, ukraineinitiative.com, you in fact will be able to do that. Just a couple of comments from folks who have uh, contributed to this cause. Here's one. This was from a pastor actually in, in Colorado. He said to us, he said, quote, he said, you all are living proof of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We praise God for you. And then 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. He says, we are afflicted in every way. This is the verse, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. That was from our pastor, Jay. Here's another one from Colorado. Interestingly, she said, we love you all and are praying for you all. God is always working. Thank you for allowing the Lord to work through you. And many comments just like that. So if you are led of the Lord to assist believers in Ukraine, you can do so through this effort, ukraineinitiative.com, and then information is there. All right, now let's go back into it here. Um, uh, Bill, as we wrap up the program, I want to ask you a question here before you um, get your main concern about uh, Israel's main concern about the Russian-Ukraine war. And that is this. It's been interesting that Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has met with Vladimir Putin and attempted to interject Israel into the Russian-Ukraine war. That's got a lot of people in intrigued. Uh, not all good, frankly, but Nonetheless, can you comment on why you think Israel would even want to get involved in this and if it bodes well for Bennett and Israel or if it bodes perhaps ill? Yes. Well, one of the things to recognize is that Zelensky himself actually asked Bennett to intervene and try to broker something between Russia and Ukraine. So, and Zelensky is Jewish heritage. Uh, relationships between prime ministers of Israel and Russian presidents, Putin namely, have uh, been ongoing for a long time. Even when Netanyahu was the prime minister, he would visit with Putin quite a bit. Quite a bit, He'd go to Moscow and visit with him, especially even when the Syrian revolution was going on and Russia was helping Syria out and pummeling Bashar al-Assad's enemies. There's an old saying that says, keep your friends close, but, but your enemies closer. Um, you know, Russia, the relationship between Israel and Russia is very peculiar, and it, it ultimately won't bode well for Israel because we know that there's a prophecy coming where Russia will actually invade Israel down the road. Of course, they're not looking at that in Israel right now. They're not paying attention to Bible prophecies or leadership over there. But Russia has relationships with Israel, I mean, excuse me, with uh, Syria and Iran that Israel wants to somehow kind of have some sort of sway and say amidst what's going on in those national developments. 
So Israel's, I think, is it's a peculiar relationship. They're strange bedfellows, but you know Bennett's going to stay and do it. It's already been sort of precedent there to try to have a dip diplomatic relationship with Russia. Bill, Sam's already alluded to it uh, in his comments before he uh, posed the last question to you, but I'm just curious if you could now take the final few minutes we have and talk a little bit about what is the motivation behind Israel's interests and what are their main concerns about this Russia-Ukraine war? Right, and I commented earlier that this invasion of Ukraine, no matter what the outcome will be, is not an existential threat for Israel, but there are some serious concerns Israel has as they're watching what's going on over there. Um, you know, first of all, there's thousands of Jews in Ukraine. Some lower estimates are 40,000. Some are as high as 200,000 Jewish people in Ukraine. And at, and during this conflict in Ukraine, Russia is battle-testing weapons that can be deployed or export, exported down to Syria, and Israel and Syria are still at war with each other for all intents and purposes. And Russia does not approve of the Israeli airstrikes that have been going on ongoing in Syria, trying to stop the flow of weapons from Iran through Syria to Hezbollah and their proxies. Uh, Russia recently came said and den denied the sovereignty of the Golan, which Israel is a strategic point between Israel and Syria. Uh, and, and one of the main things I think that Israel is watching is that the inactions of the Western world could promote other nefarious actors like Iran and its proxies to attack Israel. They're, they're watching Russia get away without any military intervention from the Western world, and they're concerned this is going to promote uh, these other nefarious, nefarious actors like Iran to come against them and hasten the, the nuclear weapon potential they're going for. Uh, Bill, that's just a great summary. I think everything you just said there are very logical um, uh, and I think the Israeli involvement with Russia, keep your enemies, keep your, you know, keep your, your enemies close, uh, is, is probably, is really pretty good. I, I mean, I, that's excellent. And any comment here, we just have a couple minutes and I want Dave to close in prayer, but can you take a minute, Bill, and just say, for instance, if somebody goes to your website, this information we've talked about today, do you have anything there that they may find? Just to highlight a couple things that they could find there. We do. At prophecydepot.com, I've got books, articles, DVDs. Uh, if they go to our products page, they're going to see that I've recently released a three-disc DVD. It's the most comprehensive work on the Ezekiel 38 prophecy. It's called Ezekiel 38, When God Protects Israel. So they're going to find I'm right on the pulse and cutting edge of prophetic application to world events and, and with, with the prophetic perspective and biblical narrative. That, that's excellent. And uh, Dave, just before you pray, ladies and gentlemen, if you search on our website, standinthegapradio.com or on the, on the app, and you highlight the Israel Focus programs, you will find a tremendous uh, wealth of information on this program, Standing Up Today, on these uh, emphasis that we highlight. And so I, I, I bring that before you as well. Dave, if you could uh, close us in prayer. It's appropriate that we pray about these things we've talked about today, isn't it? Delighted to, Sam and, and Bill. Delight to have you on the program. Father, thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Lord, thank you that though you've not told us everything that's going to happen in the last days, Lord, you sure have not left us in the dark. You have given us plenty of information in your word to let us know that which is coming, that which will come, specifically with respect to your people, the nation of Israel. So, Father, I pray that we'd understand, Lord, that none of this that we're watching in the news currently, none of that which will happen, that you yet to come. It's taking you by surprise. It's part of your divine plan. You have a hand in all of it. So we may, may we take great comfort from that and may we live aggressively for you in the spreading of the gospel in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dr. Bill Solace of prophecydepot.com for being with us again. Great information, great update, and uh, wonderful.